Hiya Matty, uh, as per your request mate, just a quick look at what we were doing in your last session. Obviously we're talking about the path of the hands. Um, on the left here at the start, we have the tendency to just lift the hands and the club a fraction too early. Uh, as I showed you with, uh, with Tom Dolan's swing, this move can work, uh, but it requires certain things to happen in the downswing, uh, a couple of which are contradictory to what we're actually trying to get you to do uh, based on your sort of miss pattern if you will your big miss that you want to try and control so hands are lifting sweet spot gets a little bit out in front of the hands subsequently the hands get onto elbow plane a little bit too soon chef sets a little bit too steep for my liking Hands then start to lift. And by about P3.8, you're starting to sense that the club needs to be in a different position, which is when we get that shaft sort of twisting and laying back a little bit. So we get that little move just at the completion of your backswing. And that's you getting the club, uh, that's, a, that's you getting the club in a position to generate some power and deliver it appropriately into the back of the ball. So you can see the hands stay pretty high and the club starts to drop in under plane and that's what gives that club um, or the swing that little twirling look so arms get a little bit high and then from there the wrists have got to bow a little bit twist a little bit the shaft gets twisted one danger in doing this is that the right shoulder works internally too much so works this way a little bit too much in transition Again, to try and get the arm back against the torso, to try and lay the shaft down, etc, etc. So, that little twirl in the swing is you putting the club where it needs to be to get the job done. Uh, unfortunately, it's not necessarily the best way for you to do things. Hands are always a little bit too high. Club starts to tumble out in front of the hands. And through the ball, to be fair, you know, pretty good. It always has been. Uh, good athlete, you make things work, you know where that club needs to be through the golf ball, all in all pretty good. Uh, but that move on the way back makes the move you desire on the way down, certainly from P4 to P6, a little bit trickier to achieve. So pretty good at that point, a little bit high, a little bit lifted. Then we start to twist the shaft, work the right shoulder down to attempt to put the club in the slot. So here we've got the bar just level with or just above the right shoulder when I'm holding the bar. I tend to hold it here. Uh, but in this instance, using the cane and the drill, uh, cane and the golf bag doing the drill, we're just going to give you a little bit of leeway. This straight away is encouraging you to work the hands inwards and upwards. Um, certainly more inwards on this. Hands don't lift as fast. Sweet spot still on the hand plane line at P2. The setting of the shaft now at P3 is much more appropriate. So you can see how it's not as high as it was over on the left. As we get to the top of the backswing now, the butt of the club is more on the elbow plane. And as a result, we don't need that sort of that move that we see demonstrated here on the left so butt of the club a little bit too high shaft starts to twist and lay down right shoulder drops back to get the club back in behind the hands on this one there's no need we can just pretty much it will always lay down a little bit I haven't got a problem with that but now we can unwind as much as we want without the fear of that left arm getting out in front of us too much which would result in heel strikes pulls etc etc uh, we can see how much more the shaft lays down at p5 again model is mid right bicep at that point it can continue in that vein and instead of dropping sort of in line with or slightly out in front of the hands which is all right if you're doing the pull drill um, you're trying to shift the swing to the left but in this instance we're not we're just trying to make some normal swings Sweet spot now in a more appropriate position.
a little bit more chest on at P6 because we've not had to get that shoulder uh, rotating, if you will, internally in transition. So we've not had to make that move. Through the ball, as before, you know, pretty similar. Maybe shoulder tilts are a little bit more level, which is not a bad thing with yourself. Exit just a touch lower. Uh, so just a tidying up process there. It's not really that relevant. The ball's gone at that point. Uh, it's just showing you the knock-on effect of the changes that you've made. So the goal is to get the arms as deep as we can at P4 so that we can unwind, get back into flexion without the arms getting pulled out too much. Which means the delivery has the sweet spot in behind the hands, which is great for power uh, and also just raising the flight a little bit. And then from there, mate, just keep hold of the club and keep unwinding. You're doing a great job of that. Uh, through the golf ball, excellent. It's a beautiful finish. A little bit more under control on the right. Uh, right by left bicep, a little bit more parallel, etc., uh, etc. Et so much more in line with the model on the right than it is on the left. Keep working away at it. And I'm going to have a quick look now at what we talked about with your driver. So I'm just going to get your driver swings up for you. Okay, so looking at driver, the big problem was the low launch. Um, the inability to find the center of the club was largely due to the fact that you were, you were trying to create a flight. Uh, certain things start to happen to try and compensate for the problems. And then before you know it, you've got a whole mess on your hands. So big issue with driver is coming into the golf ball, the low launch is due to um, very low face contact as per the document that I emailed across to you. So hitting the ball very low down on the club face. Bottom of the club slows down, top of the club speeds up, vertical gearing. Uh, consequently, this ball is going to come out relatively flat. Um, the reason you hit the ball low down on the club face um, is not... Generally, what a lot of people would do, a lot of people would divide the elbows or the head would come up quickly um, or you'd see this lead legs, you know, bracing too fast. Uh, this isn't the case with yourself. The, the issue is that we've got too much shaffling, which in turn shortens the radius of the swing. So we can see that with the driver, that shaffling's, you know, way too much. We want to get rid of some of that. If, I'm just going to put some lines on here. So there's the current condition. We're going to use the base of the club as an indicator. If we had some shaffling come out of this club, the base of the club would be lower and the contact would be higher up on the face. So one of the issues we've got here is that we've almost got the sort of the impact angles that would be great for an iron shot, but not for a driver. Now, the only way you can make this work is either by sagging into that left knee, which would lower the left shoulder, which would raise the face contact, or seeing it up really high, um, which is what we did here on the right, just to illustrate using flight scope how much the flight increased. when you hit the ball higher up on the face. Um, the issue we had with that was that, you know, we've still got this swing that, to be fair, is not necessarily, in my world anyway, is not massively desirable with a driver. We've got limited amounts of loft. Uh, we should be trying to hit the ball um, relatively level, maybe a little bit up, maybe two degrees up. Um, doesn't need to be up excessively. Um, if you did hit up more using the shaft lean that you have there, you would either top the ball or you would have to tee the ball up extremely high. Uh, when we teed the ball up for you, the launch did go up, but you said you commented that it felt a little bit contrived, a little bit strange, and wasn't really your cup of tea. Um, the better drivers of the ball for me are players who don't tee the ball up excessively high but learn to recover the shaft. So we don't need as much shaft lean. 
the less shaftling we had at that point, the wider the radius would be, and the more high up on the face the contact would be, or the more centered the contact would be. Um, as per the link to the website I sent, you know, there's a lot of low launching tour players. Uh, when I say low launching, I, I would mean that there's a lot of players who don't launch the ball at 14, 15 degrees, um, which is what's being maybe sort of portrayed to a lot of people. Uh, you don't need to launch it that high. You've got plenty of club head speed, you know, excess of 100 miles an hour. You can keep the launch angle around about 11, 12 degrees and still make it function. So the main concern is getting rid of some shaft lean. As you do that, you'll have a little bit more dynamic loft, which will increase the launch fractionally. Uh, you will also have uh, a higher face contact, which will increase the launch again. Uh, the extra loft would normally add spin, but in your case, you're going to hit it slightly higher up on the face, so the spin should cancel out. Low end contacts are always spinning more. Um, do I think you need to change your driver? No. Um, I think you need to learn to hit the top end, or I, I think you need to learn to hit centre and slightly above centre with the driver you've got before you look at doing that. Um, you know the drill for that, don't need to elaborate any further. Uh, get the shaft recovering. You've got a great swing, it's really coming on a treat. Uh, you've got some great compliments from some very uh, heavy hitters uh, in our world uh, online the other day. So, you know, keep plugging away at it. It's a great action. Just got to learn to recover that shaft with driver a little bit more. Good luck with it. I look forward to working with you again in a few weeks' time. Well done.